Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for sending us your Holy Spirit that always guides us and leads us to you. So in Jesus' name, we have ears to hear and eyes to see tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Well, tonight we're talking about the gospel of the kingdom. And we found out Sunday, and I asked the church to read the last few verses in Mark 16. In the last verse is verse 20, and it says, They went out and preached the word everywhere. The word means the Bible about Jesus. They preached the word everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. So every time we share with somebody, every time we minister, we should expect God to do something. I don't care how many there are, or you're one-on-one, -on -one, you got, we've got to start expecting it. And I believe the whole gospel in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, the gospel, Christ died for our sins, He was buried, and He rose the third day. And if you believe that, you're in. It's that simple. In Matthew 1, 21, unto us a child is born. And it goes on, and you should call his name Jesus, which is Savior. And so Jesus is the Savior. And the gospel is good news. So I believe when we come to church, we need to hear some good news. There's plenty of bad news, like we were just talking before church about the weather in some of the states right now and how many people are out of electricity and all the car wrecks. And I'm so grateful we live in Arizona, at least in this part of Arizona. We usually don't get any snow. <laughs> I mean, the, the weather is pretty good. And so I praise God and I, I tried to tell the Lord I'm not going to complain about the heat anymore. I'm just going to be grateful that I have an air conditioner <laughs> in my car in the house. Amen. And I'd like to have you turn over to Matthew chapter 4. Because we're talking about the gospel of the kingdom. And it's got to be good news. And if you, if you see in Matthew chapter 4, and in verse 23, And Jesus went about all Galilee, Teaching in their synagogue. What was he preaching? Preaching the gospel of the kingdom. So after we preach the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sickness, we should see all kinds of sickness being healed. And all kinds of diseases among the, the people were healed. And then you go over to chapter 10 and you see in verse 7, he says, and as you go, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And I would think that would be pretty close. And so when you go over to chapter, uh, uh, let me see, 16, Matthew 16 and 28. And you have to picture the Lord talking to his disciples. And you've you got to picture this so you understand it. We're talking about the kingdom. And I believe the kingdom of God is right now. Because the king, a kingdom, is where a king rules. Is, if Christ is living in you, and you're submitted to the word of God, the kingdom is at hand. It's in you. And we talked about this on Sunday, about given it shall be given. How do we give out Christ? How do we lay hands on the sick? And But you have to... A salesman has to know what he's selling if he's going to be successful. We have to believe what we're saying or it's not going to work. You can tell people to quote Scripture all day long. If they don't believe it, it's still not going to work. Amen? Amen. 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 And so notice what he says. Or surely I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. That was like uh, two, uh, the year 31, they think, is when Jesus died, most commentaries would say. Well, He's telling those disciples, 
They're not going to die until they see the kingdom of God coming. So what did he mean? The born again experience. I'm knocking at the door. If anyone hear my voice, I will come in. The kingdom of God came in, because he is the king, and have supped with you. Right? And so on your sheet, I have Matthew 4.23, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. So we're to preach the gospel of the kingdom. And notice in Acts 20 and 24b, they were talking about the gospel of, of the grace of God. Because we found out we're saved by grace and not by works. And then in Romans 1.16, the gospel is the power of God unto something. It's moving. Salvation. And that's why we say, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Mm -hmm. Because we're going unto what? What does salvation mean? Healed, delivered, set free. Amen. So tonight we should get rid of an onion peel. And I, I explain us as like an onion. And we get one peel taken off at a time. When this, when this deliverance or this healing or this thought that you have that's just destroying you. And, and I, I want to say that one again because we got this one Sunday. And Isaiah, this is not in your notes, 54 and verse 17. It's the last verse in Isaiah 54. And, and we've quoted this for years. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. And we stop there. And we never read the rest of it. We've, we didn't realize we had to do something. See, we keep waiting for God to do something. And why does it say in James 4, 7, Submit yourself to God. There's the key. Resist the devil and he will flee. So you got a problem with the devil? Submit to God. Amen. Get rid of him. Mm -hmm. It says, casting down imaginations. Mm -hmm. That's our job. I have to cast these imaginations down. And we're constantly going to have them, I believe. Because Paul said, I die daily. He had them. And he was caught up to the third heaven. And still had to cast down them. Mm -hmm. You know, every day he had to be renewed. Mm -hmm. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue, and I love the, the New American Standard says, that accuses you. Every tongue which rises against you in judgment, and in Romans 8, 1, there's now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Mm. We're never going to be punished in heaven for our sins. But we have to sow what we reap. And I always explain that if I'm going down the freeway at 90 miles an hour, and the, I look at the red lights, they, they tag me, and I'm pulling my car over, and I'm saying, forgive me, Lord, and he says, you're forgiven, now sign the ticket. You still got to pay the price. Mm -hmm. If we live in sin, we're going to have to live it. Amen. If we live in righteous, we'll have to live it. Aren't you glad we can live it? Amen. Amen. And so it says, so who, God doesn't judge us, so who does? The devil. The devil, other people, yourself. Mm -hmm. Look at how we judge ourselves. Mm -hmm. Against you, you shall condemn. That means we've got to get rid of them. We've got to stop them. This is the heritage of, of, of the Lord. And their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. So when I saw the rest of that verse, I says, my gosh, how many times have I heard people quote, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Well, if that's true, why are we getting zinged? <laughs> Taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the devil. So, the gospel in Ephesians 6.15, the gospel of peace. So, it, it just telling you the, that's what's in this book. And in Ephesians 1.13, the gospel of salvation. In Romans 14.17, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but <clears throat> righteousness. And that's talking about character. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, how are we going to get the word out? How, how are we going to... You know, Jesus performed miracles and they believed. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Sunday, I, I think it's Sunday, or next week we'll be talking about the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because He's anointed me. 
Acts 1.8, and you shall receive power. When? After the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Luke 24.49, what does it say? It says, wait, don't leave the church until you're endured. And that's the word for clothed with power. Amen. It's the promise of the Father. What's the power for? To be a witness. Amen. Jesus was a witness of the Father. Where to be a witness? And that's the same word. The second Greek word there is martyr. And I believe that the Holy Spirit gives us power to deny ourselves. And it's different from being born again. That's in a separate altogether. They didn't have any power until Acts 2. And what happened? 3,000 people get saved. Why? They saw a miracle. Mm -hmm. They heard in their own tongue their own language. That was a miracle. That was a yeah. diversity of tongues. Mm -hmm. And they were interpreting the tongue. And I've heard this over and over again in different places where that's happened. Mm -hmm. And it's happened through our ministry. Mm -hmm. With Peter one day and also with Clorinda one day. Uh, that Navajo. I said, you need to pray over him. And she prayed over him. And the next day, he was supposed to be, was supposed to be in the hospital because he's dying. We saw him at church. Mm -hmm. And Dennis, uh, Minister Dennis at the time said, what are you doing here? He says, well, that lady told me in perfect Navajo to get up and put your pants on. You're heels. So I got up I got heels when I put my pants on. <laughs> and so uh, in Pina one day, she cast a demon out of a person and, mm -hmm. and led her to the Lord in perfect Spanish. And that lady comes up to her after and says, oh, why aren't you talking to me in Spanish? And of course, we finally got an interpreter and she says, you just led me to the Lord. How come you're not talking to me? Are you mad at me? And she says, I can't speak Spanish. That's a miracle. Amen. You know, when you sense the presence of God, that's a miracle. You're not taking a drug to feel something. You're not taking pain pills to feel something. It's, it's a, a quickening. What the Bible calls, if the same Spirit raised Christ from the dead... If that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, he'll quicken or make alive mm -hmm. your spirit. And so I believe you're supposed to feel something, but you can't go by those feelings. It's got to be an inward feeling. When that lady touched the hem of his garment, she felt in her body that she was healed. Mm -hmm. So feelings are okay. The problem is you've got to <clears throat> keep it. Because Satan comes immediately to steal that seed that was planted. And if you don't know how to fight in the Spirit, you're walking around defeated all the time. Amen. So we've got to learn how to put the shield up and keep our eyes on Jesus, not on man. And so it says, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. So it tells you right away. Remember he said in, in John uh, 6, 63, the spirit gives life, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. And then in John 10.10 10, he says, The thief cometh not to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that you might have life. That's Zoe. That's an exciting life. That's a God kind of life. Have life and have it more abundantly. Well, he's talking about your spirit man coming alive. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. So we see that the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. It's not natural, but righteousness. What, what is this righteousness here is character or act. How are we supposed to act? Like Jesus. It doesn't say we're being changed into his image. Mm -hmm. Do you hear him walking around complaining about anything? No. The only time he complained, and he says, Father, if it's your will... He had to take the cup. See, he had to take the cup. Whenever you see the cup, that's going to be a trial. Mm -hmm. He says, you don't understand. You, you have a cup. I have a cup that you can't handle. And he's right. We couldn't handle what he went through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so in Proverbs 11.3, I'll never forget this when this apostle taught on this and when we were at the Scottsdale Church in the 90s. And he says, the integrity of the upright shall guide them. So this righteousness is integrity. It's character. How are, why would anybody want what we have if we act like them? I mean, that doesn't mean you walk around acting holier than thou. That's where you never get anywhere in the kingdom. We have to be at everybody's level. 
Jesus knew how to talk to the poor, the rich, the leaders. Mm -hmm. We've got to be available. It's okay to talk about football. It's okay to talk about the news. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and, and let people need to know that you're human. You, you know what they notice? You don't swear. You know what they notice? You're not complaining about your wife. You know what they notice? You're not uh, knocking everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you've got their attention. Because mm -hmm. then they can trust you. Why don't they trust us? Because they hear everything they're doing. Why would they want what you have? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you that way because you're all perfect. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> well, at least we've got to laugh out of you. So it's righteousness and peace. And I, I do want to turn there because in Romans chapter 5, we're talking about the kingdom. We've got something to give people. <clears throat> in chapter 5 and verse 1 of Romans, it says... Therefore, having been justified, or, or made innocent, or be right with God, therefore, having been justified by faith, how did we get saved? By faith. Okay. What did we do? He measured us the measure of faith, and we accepted Him. He even gave us the faith to receive Him. And that's in Romans 12 and verse 3. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace. We have peace. Everybody say it. We, we have, have peace. peace. What do we have? Peace. peace. Why do we have it? He says, I, the peace I give unto you, not as the world I give unto you. Mm -hmm. And so we already have it. But we don't know that we have it. Come on. Mm -hmm. It's already in you. Amen. You just stop for a moment and you say, oh... Yeah, there it is. Take a deep breath and blow out all the garbage and just relax. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Look at verse 9. Much more than having now been justified... By his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. And Romans 6 is so important to understand, and I just probably want to read uh, some of these. Look at 6.12. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey its lust. Notice, he's talking about how we were baptized, or the blood has covered us, mm -hmm. and yet he says... And look at in verse 13. And do not present your members as instruments. It's amazing. That word is, uh, uh, let me see, weapons. Think about what's being said. Mm -hmm. If you're disobeying a God, you're a weapon against yourself. Anybody get that? Yeah. And do not present your members as instruments or weapons of unrighteousness to sin but present yourself to God as being alive from the dead. We were dead in trespasses and sin, Ephesians 2.1. And your members as weapons of righteousness to God. So I can even make my soul come against me, or I can use my spirit to destroy the, that stinking, stinking thinking that I have. Amen. Because I can cast down these imaginations. So we've been given the peace, mm -hmm. that's Romans 5.1, mm -hmm. John 14.27, and joy. He's even given us his joy. Uh, and I, I want to read that, John 14. Because the gospel is good news. We don't need, need to hear bad news. And i got to throw some things in once in a while. John, uh, let me see, I just had it too. 1427? Yes, that, that's peace. But the joy is in 1511. Ah. That's why I was confused. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. Amen. Now, how's it going to be full? 
This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. And I'm going to talk about this on Sunday, about bearing fruit. There's all kinds of fruit we can bear. Mm -hmm. And one of them is love. And notice chapter 17 of John and verse 3. And this is an internal life that they may know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. That's something to be joyful about. <clears throat> verse 13. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be walking around in joy. We're allowing the world to control our expressions, our feelings. And I didn't say, I'm not pointing the finger at anybody, I'm saying we. You know, what are we listening to? What are we, our eye gates seeing? And th those are things we've got to think about. And mm -hmm. it says, the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy, where? Where is it? In the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the promise of the Father. And I, I, and I gave you the scriptures in John 14. And, and we're almost there, but let's, let's at least read the one in John 14, 15. And, and this is one of the reasons why we're not seeing the greater works. There's two reasons. <clears throat> For verse 12, and one of them is in verse 14, it says, If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Verse 15, notice, if you ask anything in my name, and that's an if, that means, verse 13, that's what it's talking about, <coughs> excuse me, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. <coughs> excuse me. So, is your prayer going to glorify the Lord? Mm -hmm. uh, Scott, could you get me a water? Oh, absolutely. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm right in the speaker. <coughs> I got a cough there. I swallowed wrong or something. And whatever you ask the Father in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Mm -hmm. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Notice these ifs. 1,522 of them, they're all conditional. If you love me, keep my commandments. What's his commandment? 1334. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, and that you also love one another. So the commandment is that we have to love one another. We don't have to like each other, but love is real. You love, you die for somebody. That's what he said, true love is, you die. And I've had people say, well, I'll pick you up for church as long as it's on my way. That's not love. Love is, I'll go out of my way to pick you up. Love is, I'll go out of my way to meet you. Not, well, if I'm here, I can talk to you. If not, I can't. <laughs> you know, we all have excuses. So I'm not pointing the finger at me too. And so, did anybody see that about the Holy Spirit is the promise of the Father, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and notice what it says here in chapter 14 to continue, verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and He will give you another Comforter, talking about the Holy Spirit, Helper that he may abide with you forever. Everybody say forever. Forever. So if he's going to abide for you forever, how are you going to lose it? Once you get the Holy Spirit, you're sealed, baby. Amen. And it, no one can take you out of the Father's hand, or Jesus' hand. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him or know, knows him, but you know him. Now here's Jesus. Now you've got to picture this. So you've got to picture the, what's going on. Mm -hmm. He's sitting here telling them. Okay, so now pretend you're there and, it, and Jesus is talking to you. But you know him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For he dwells with you and will be in you. He's talking about himself. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's the comforter. 
He's the Father, He's the Son, and He's the Holy Spirit. Three persons in one. And He's given you the Comforter to comfort you. But there's, you have to understand this. There's times I just need comfort. I don't need to be chewed out. I just need comfort. <laughs> and notice what he says, And I will not leave you orphans, or fatherless, or comfortless. Mm -hmm. I will come to you. Amen. 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 That's a promise of God Amen. that he's going to come to us. Amen. Call upon his name and he'll answer you. Amen. And so... In 1 Corinthians 4.20, 20, For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Mm -hmm. We can talk about this until we blew in the face, but until we act on it, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They will lay hands on the sick. Well, I've had people say, what if I lay hands on the sick and they don't get healed? Well, you can't heal anybody anyway. You're just doing what he told you to do. But... Somebody asked me that today. Have you ever prayed for people that you know they're not going to receive? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know that before you... I've even walked by people. <laughs> Just the way they were looking at me and with their arms like this. Knew they wasn't going to receive. You know? And Jesus would have passed the disciples by. Mm -hmm. Remember when he was walking on the sea? Mm -hmm. He would have passed them by. Why? They thought he was a ghost. <laughs> he wasn't going to wait for them because they disobeyed him. He told them to go to the other side. And they let the storm of life stop them. Mm -hmm. How many times have we had the storm of life stop us? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we did not go where he told us to go. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Come on, that's good preaching. Yep. And the kingdom, and notice I have in here, what is a kingdom? It's a place where a king rules. So if you're doing the will of God... That's what his word says. Let me read that. In Matthew chapter 7. I, I think I have this in your notes. Matthew seven, chapter 7 verse 21. Not, any, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Did everybody get that? You can yeah. say the sinner's prayer and it can mean nothing. Yeah. You have to accept it in your heart, not your brain. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. So, your will be done. Yes. And that's not a cop-out. That means you want his will. So, how do you find out what his will is? You've got to read the rule book. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got to know what the Bible says, what, what's ours, what isn't ours, what we should do. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and cast out demons in, you, in your name and done mighty works in your name? Mm -hmm. Then I will declare to them, I never knew you, never had that intimacy. Depart from me, you, you that practice lawlessness or wickedness. Mm -hmm. And so the kingdom of God is where somebody is operating in love and believing the word of God. The kingdom of God is a place. A kingdom is a place where a king rules and has authority. The territory subject to a king. And he is the Lord of lords and king of kings. Amen. Amen. And we know we already said that. But I believe the kingdom is now. And we just read that. And I like Mark. Uh, I think I wrote it down. Yeah, I did. Mark. 115. The time has come at last. The kingdom of God has arrived. The Phillips translation says that. Has arrived. In Matthew 24 14, notice, and this gospel of the kingdom. And, and I know I've been saying this a lot lately, but we've got to think about it. The world knows what we're against, but do they know what? We're for. Mm -hmm. You see, we love to come against everything that's sin, mm -hmm. but we don't say, when well, you look at the, a woman with lust, you've committed adultery. If you're cheating on your wife, that's just as bad as anything else. 
How about lying? The Bible says liars aren't going to make it. So where do we stand? I mean, you've got to think about these yeah. things. Mm -hmm. We're all liars. Mm -hmm. It's none righteous. No, not one. Mm -hmm. So we've got to be honest. First of all, you've got to be able to admit that you're not, all, you're not perfect. None of us are. Mm -hmm. We're working out our salvation. I'm not talking about the born-again experience. That's a done deal. And that's so hard for us to expect, accept. If we could just understand He died for all our sins... And you've already been judged. Mm -hmm. You've already been judged innocent. And that's hard for us to accept that. Yeah, but you don't know how they're living. Do you really know how they're living? Mm -hmm. no. They could be going through living hell. Talk to people that are in sin. They'll tell you when they've come out of it how the hell they went through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Huh? Come on, I've talked to many of them. Mm -hmm. Pastor Al, you ought to be so grateful you haven't been where I've been. I've heard it more than once. I'm so grateful I haven't. I haven't been innocent yeah. either. Mm -hmm. But a lot of things I thank God I haven't done. By the grace of God, that's it. Because it wasn't because of me. I wanted to do it all. And we know in Luke 4, 18 and 19, that one about the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And that's for all of us. And notice in Matthew 24, 14, and the, kingdom, and the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations and the end will come. So we know if this is right, I mean, we can show scripture where the known world received the word, but nobody came over here then. Mm -hmm. And so there is going to be a time when everybody, I believe, has a chance. And we're finding out some people are receiving Jesus, and if they told anybody, they'd be killed. But that's happening because he's appearing to them. Mm -hmm. And remember, if... if if you're seeking God, you will find Him. And, and we, we have a hard time with that. The eunuch, Philip gets translated 17 miles so he could tell him how to get saved. Mm -hmm. And we see scriptures that show, you know, I've had people say, what about the people over that lived over here then? If they were seeking God, He's mm -hmm. going to make Himself real. The Bible says he, He'll show Himself to you in the nature. Mm -hmm the trees, and the mountains. How can we be the only planet that I know of that has air? Why do we have air and the others don't? Try living on Mars, see how quick you last. Yeah, we can build a dome. But I'm just saying, we were. this earth was made for a reason. Amen. It was made for us. Amen. The universe is ours too. Amen. He made it all for us. Uh, the rainbow, Barbara sent me a picture. We had a, a rainbow the other night, but it was yeah, looked like back east, the, the 51 and the 101. Mm -hmm. I don't know if any of you saw that on the news, but I, man, that must be in another state. No, that was here. <laughs> and we, I said, Barbara, look at the rainbow. And it went from South Mountain. I saw it right on this side of the mountain, all the way around. And I've got it on my phone, a perfect... Uh, rainbow with another rainbow next to it. Mm -hmm. It was just mm -hmm. gorgeous. And, and she put it on the internet. She's gotten so many likes. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just beautiful. And so that in itself, why did God put a rainbow in the sky? To remind him, it says, that we're never going to be, the world is never going to be covered with water again. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's a reason yeah. for, the, for that. And the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations and then, then the end will come. Mark 16, 20. Preach the good news. Where? It says in all the nations. So we still have a ways to go. The last I heard, there's a lot of people that have never heard about the good news. And we're not talking about a, a religion. Do's and don'ts. We're talking about, you know, if you love somebody, you know, there's, there's a... a you know, like your elders, mm -hmm. the respect we have for where to respect our elders. Mm -hmm. and, and are we learning this anymore? We're to respect authority. And we're supposed to pray for those in authority mm -hmm. over us. And so uh, there's just so many things as Christians, we need to bring back some of those things. I, I mean... Mm -hmm. 
I was raised differently. When, when a mother has eight children, it's very different than one or two. And you learn discipline real quick. <laughs> or you get the, <laughs> the whip, basically. <laughs> and, and we already read uh, Matthew 10, 7. Go preach, saying the kingdom of God is at hand. I guess I didn't read that one. Raise the dead, cleanse the lepers. Freely you have received, freely give. We're to give out the gospel. What is the gospel? Good news. That doesn't mean you walk up to people and say, you're going to hell because you're smoking. <laughs> Where's that in the Bible? Or somebody's swearing. <clears throat> you know, uh, we've got to be so careful how we talk to the unsaved. Because mm -hmm. you talk to them about church, oh, you're one of those, all you want is our money. What have they heard? You know? Mm -hmm. And... How are we going to touch people if we're condemning them? People want to be loved. Amen. And this, this younger generation, they're tired of religion. And, and they need to see the power of God. But they don't understand, without the Word, there's no power. Amen. I was Spirit-filled, had the baptism of the Holy Spirit at nine and a half. I never saw God move till I was 30, till I found... The Bible was real. Mm -hmm. All those years, I never saw one miracle. Yet I was a miracle. I didn't know I was a miracle. Mm -hmm. My life was saved by a dog three times. Now that's impossible. You know, that dog had help. <laughs> I'm serious. This is serious stuff. And that's why I've had a hard time having pets after having that one. And it wasn't even mine. It was my brother's. You know, but he... he Saved my life three times. Wow. Big time saving. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm just telling you. I, I didn't realize then it was God that saved me. Right. Not mm -hmm. the dog. Right. He just used the dog. Like, the, remember the donkey he spoke? The donkey actually spoke. God wasn't speaking. That donkey was speaking. Well, how did that happen? God made him speak. <laughs> mm -hmm. he, if he can make a donkey speak, what can he do through us? Amen. Amen. Come on. Right. We're so shy and so worried we're going to offend somebody. Well, try. How would you like to be treated? Good it's luck. that simple. How would you like to be treated? Beaten on the, uh, you know, preaching. Beaten on the table and you're going to hell. Well, no. immediately they just turned you off. You know, you realize drinking is going to ruin your liver. We just... Now they're going to get more. <clears throat> Tell an addict person they can't do it, they're going to just do it for spite. Mm -hmm. But you love them. Uh, we have a, one that's been a, a drunk all his life. He's going to be here to share with us Sunday morning. If he gets here, the Lord willing, uh, in, in our workers' meeting. And he wants to tell you what a disciple of Jesus Christ is. It's taken him from 18 to 51 to find out what a disciple is. And I'm sure he's listening right now. So you better be here. Don't let the snow keep you. <laughs> Amen. We need to hear those things, that somebody's actually listening to these recordings. And they're getting delivered, set free. And they're a disciple. Amen. They're in the Word. Praise God. Even answering these questions. Look at the <clears throat> Chronicles. That should be, yeah, 29, 1b. The temple is not for man, but for the Lord God. Amen. When you realize that, you were made for Him. Yes. You're His dwelling place. God is not made in any, I mean, God is not in any man-made building unless you walked in it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Come on. Right. If nobody's at this church, God is, well, He's everywhere. But I'm talking about His presence. Mm -hmm. You carry him everywhere you go. One of these days we're going to get that. The Bible is God speaking to me. They are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. That was in Proverbs 4.22. God worked through Jesus now. Jesus works through us. And there's plenty of scriptures here. Some verses about the kingdom of, of God or heaven, they both mean the same thing. And there's so many scriptures that talk about the kingdom. 
but basically the kingdom is a place where a kingdom rules. And, mm -hmm. and we'll go to, as we're closing, in Luke chapter 17. And I, I have so many scriptures to back this up. And in Luke chapter 17, and I'm going to start with verse 20. And <clears throat> like, I give you all these scriptures, we're the temple of God, we're the temple of the Holy Spirit, Christ in us, the hope of glory. Greater is he that is in you than, than he that is of the world. And so you have to picture yourself as Christ living in you. So in Luke 17, 20, now he, asked, he was asked by the Pharisees, when the, kingdom of, when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. In other words, you can't see it. And, and think about this. Pat, did you change after you got saved? Yeah. Come, something happened, didn't it? Did the Lord open up the heavens and come down and shake your hand? <laughs> no. You didn't see anything. He just, you just knew. You know that you know that you know. The, the Spirit bears witness with your spirit that you're a child of God. And so he says, no, you can't see it. It's a spiritual thing. God is a spirit. And they, what is a spirit? That's why we don't say ghost in a lot of places, because the word spirit is not a ghost. Okay. And, and, you know, the King James call it a ghost, but it isn't a ghost. You know, a ghost is, uh, what's that white ghost they have made a lot? Used Casper. To make? Casper. It's not Casper. It's God is a spirit. Amen. So what, where are you going to receive it? In your spirit. Three part being, spirit, soul, and body. Now when he, he was asked about the, by the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation or something you can see. Nor will they say, see here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. That should answer the question. What is the kingdom of God about? A living Christ that lives in you, that forgave you. Throughout eternity you've been forgiven, but you still have this soul nature. And how do you get healed of that? Lord, forgive me. It's too simple. That's why we have such a hard time with this. Lord, we just thank you that the kingdom of God is good news. We are forgiven. We can live in this life with your help. You've given us the Holy Spirit to guide us and to comfort us and give us power to deny this stinking thinking and let you reign. Lord, that's our cry tonight. Reign, Lord. Have your way in us, Lord. In Jesus' name, bless this word tonight, Lord. Everybody said, Amen. Amen.